Hello world. In today's video, I will be giving a quick tutorial on vocal layering. We're going to start with the importance of harmonies and vocal buses, and then go over phasing issues and how to fix them, as well as stereo shaping, dynamic EQing to make room for different types of vocal layers, and then just the importance of vocal layering overall. Would you rather have vocals that sound like this? I'm still Or vocals that sound like this. I'm still here all along, but I will make it on my own. I know you think I've grown, but this apartment's not a home. I the most important aspect to getting vocals that sound full like this is the harmonies. Of course, having multiple vocal takes is extremely important, and we'll go over that in just a second. But the thing that makes the main vocal that I showed you most distinct and separate from the second take is the harmonies I have layering the high end as well as the low end. I'll go ahead and play the vocals without any of the stereo shaping or surrounding vocals and just play the main vocal take with harmonies and you can see exactly what I mean. I'm still here all alone, but I will make it on my own. I know you think I've grown, but this apartment's not a home. If you're not super good at recording a higher or lower version of your vocal take, then you can use my new tone tutorial to figure out how to pitch your vocals to the correct pitch so that you can have a higher take. Otherwise, go ahead and record a version of your take in a similar key except on a higher octave, and that'll be a harmony. And if it's more comfortable with you, do the same thing on a lower key and then layer that with your current key. The next thing I want to talk about is just vocal stacking in general. When you're layering your vocals, you're going to want to take multiple takes of the same vocals. If you just duplicate the same vocals three times, you're going to be left with a lot of phasing issues. Phasing is basically when the vocals take up the same frequency range, so they end up clashing with each other inside of the mix. I'm going to leave a link in the description for a basic program called Ozone Imager, which you'll be able to use to measure whether or not your vocals are phasing. And then I'm also going to give you guys a few tips on how to avoid phasing in general. For this tutorial, I did duplicate the same take three times to purposely create some phasing issues and kind of show you guys some ways that you can fix those. What you're going to want to do for your vocal layering is create three different load orders for your vocals and then pan one to the left and to the right and alternatively you can also stereo shape them personally i like to do both so that my left and right ones have more width and my center vocal is more mono and then what you're going to want to do is route all three of those to the same vocal bus and basically a vocal bus is a load order that affects multiple vocals at once and by compressing and using ozone on all three of your vocal takes at once you can give a more concise and mixed vocal presence. Then you can also get a separate bus for your high and low harmonies, so that they don't blend in the same way that your left and right do. FL comes with a basic stereo shaper, so I like to stereo shape my left and right vocals as well as pan them so that they surround the vocals like I said. And then I also use the phasing knob here to avoid phasing in general. And there's also a plugin called Stereo Enhancer, which you can use to avoid phasing issues by offsetting the phase or inverting completely your vocals. And it also offers a stereo separation knob if you want to separate your vocals without having to use stereo shaping or multiple takes. I leave the stereo separation off and I use the phase to offset it slightly against the other vocals. And then this is where the ozone imager comes in. I use Ozone Elements 9 because I bought it in the Isotope pack, but Ozone Imager 2 is free and you can use it to measure the phasing on your vocals. Basically this graph right here is going to tell you how wide or thin your vocals are. And a 0 means they're completely the same and they're phasing together. And a 1 means they're thick and a negative 1 means they're thin. You don't want it to go all the way to 1 and it's better to have it between 0 and negative 1. It can even dip closer to the negative 1, but you don't want it to hit all the way at the positive 1. Let me show you guys what my vocals look like going through the imager. I'm still here all alone, but I will make it on my own. I know you think I've grown, but the As you can see, the vocals don't go much above zero and they never hit plus one. If I were to turn the phasing off on the stereo enhancer, 
and also turn the phasing off on all the stereo shapers, then you'll see how much more of a phasing issue we get. I'm still here all alone, but I will make... You can definitely hear the phasing in the high end, and if you can't, that's definitely still something you're going to want to avoid because it's going to cause even more issues in the mixing and mastering process. So I highly recommend downloading Ozone Imager 2. Like I said, it's completely free. I'll have a link in the description for you to grab it, and you'll be able to check the phase of all your different vocals. Also, you can keep the width knob on your imager at zero unless you want to widen your vocals, and you can also sterilize your vocals through Ozone Imager. And an important thing to note is, if you do not have all of your vocals routed to that same vocal bus, you won't be able to tell how out of phase they are with each other. That's part of the reason the vocal bus comes in handy, as well as for compressing all of your vocals together. And I recommend compressing it at a ratio of two, unless you don't have any compression on your other vocals, then you can compress it at a ratio of four, depending on how much compression you're looking for. And like I said, I keep the high vocals on their own vocal bus so that they aren't pressed together with the rest of the vocals. Another part of vocal layering that I want to discuss is what I would consider either the ad libs or just the highlighting layering. And these are the kind of the part of the vocals that you want to highlight and to stick out from the other parts of the vocals. And they won't necessarily be a high or a low harmony, but they're more there to draw attention to parts of the vocals that you really like. Here all alone, I will make it on my own. You think I've grown. So this leaves space in between the vocals where the highlights aren't playing and allows those parts of the lyrics to shine through in their own way. One of the last things that I wanted to discuss real quick is formatting. And I have more tutorials with presets on how to use formats and how to specifically apply this to different genres that are more formatting heavy. It's actually pronounced formant, but I call it formant shifting and I really can't correct that. So don't go uh, yell at me in the comments, but basically formant is the resonance frequency of the vocal track. And by changing these resonance frequencies up and down, you can give different textures to your vocals and you can either make those severely separate or blend them in a way where they're not as noticeable. Not only can it help with phasing issues, but it also adds distinction to the vocals and helps separate different takes. I'm still here all alone, but I will make it on my own. This is a format shift in the positive direction, and how you do this is turn on formatting in Antares, and then just drag it towards the plus. How you would do it in Pitcher, if you guys don't have Antares and you're just using Pitcher, I'll open up Pitcher real quick to show you guys, is you would open up Pitcher, and then use this gender knob right here. Go male for more deep, and then the plus direction would be female, the other direction. I'm still here all alone, but I will make it on my own. That is a negative format shift, and I did it the same way inside of Antares. And once again, if you don't have Antares, you could grab Pitcher and do the same thing. And as you can tell, when I play all three of them together, you don't necessarily notice this. I'm still here all alone, but I will make it on my own. Instead, it just fills out the space of your vocals and makes them sound more full. Another thing that I would suggest is your main vocal can have a lot more of your effects like delay and reverb. And a lot of the time, you can also have your highlighting vocals have delay and reverb so they stand out even more. And then your side vocals, which are just there to fill the space in the high and low frequencies, I take a lot of those effects off. So they're mainly just auto-tuned and limited and EQ'd. They're not as necessarily heavily processed. And that can kind of give a nice blending effect. And this will be different with different genres that you're working with as well as the amount of vocal layering that you want. Sometimes you don't want your vocals to be as full and you can just go with some more simple harmonies and highlighting and that'll still come with an awesome result. And other times you really want to fill out the space and that's where vocal layering heavily can really come in handy. Once again, if you wanna learn how to pitch your vocals like this, that's actually a natural take, just auto-tuned. But if you want to pitch your vocals higher, I have a tutorial on that, and I'll go ahead and link that in the description as well on how to use Newtone and some of the functions that Newtone has, which allows you to reselect which notes your voice is in, and you can manually raise the pitch of your voice or lower it. I also have a tutorial on how to dynamic EQ, so I'll link that in the description as well. But basically, I just wanted to show you what it looks like in action. Basically, a dynamic EQ 
takes away parts of the main vocal every time the high vocal comes in and that gives the harmonies more room to shine how i have mine working right now is every time the high vocal comes in it pulls away from the main vocal bus and lets the high shine through in the high mid range of frequencies and i'll show you that in action and then if you want to do that yourself you can go ahead and check out my tutorial on dynamic eqing and figure out how to dynamic your late all alone but i will make it on my own i know you think i've grown so as you can see every time those high harmonies hit it pulls away the high to mid frequency side of the paramatic eq and the main vocal bus and allows those harmonies to shine through and that's something that you can achieve through dynamic eqing that's basically it for this tutorial and it's just a basic quick overview on vocal layering i hope this helps you guys and i hope you get some awesome layering done if you want any more tutorials let me know this tutorial was actually suggested by someone in the comments so thank you so much for suggesting this i hope this helped you and so much love to y'all everybody have a good day peace